I want to talk about what makes us rich. What is it that makes us rich? Um, and uh, uh, I'll be reading a bunch of scriptures actually, so you can turn to those scriptures if you so desire, or you can just allow me to read them for you. The first one is 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. And it says, For you know, for ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. And I think that most of us probably feel pretty comfortable with that scripture. Uh, I think we we feel we have a pretty good grasp of that. And so I want to just talk about that, and then I'll read some other scriptures. Um, but in my life, and I'm sure in your life too, uh, many times Jesus has come to me, um, and he's come to me in his tremendous majesty and glory to, to help me and to get me through different situations. And uh, in that sense, he's enriched my life. He's enriched my life in many ways. He's enriched my life through, you know, healings and miracles and deliverances and blessings and protection. And in so many things, he has done things that has uh, enriched my life. And I just want to read some scriptures along that line. Uh, first is 1 Corinthians 1, 5 through 7. And it says that in everything ye are enriched by him, in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Enriched in all them by him in all things. Second Corinthians nine eleven, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. See these these scriptures are talking about this enrichment. Romans ten twelve, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord overall is rich unto all that call upon him. And then uh, a couple more. 1 Corinthians 4, 8. Now ye are full. Now ye are rich. You have reigned as kings without us. And I would to God ye did reign, that we also might reign with you. So now you are full, and now you are rich. And then finally, Ephesians 2, 4 and 6. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You know, I've been with the Lord for a lot of years, and I have been so thankful for his lordship and for his power and for his dealing in my life and in all of these situations healings miracles all of these things um, the the situations when he's come in with his power and with his lordship and uh, you know as, as it were the king sitting on the throne reaching down to touch me, um, the situations have been changed. So many that I can't number. He's changed so many situations. But in truth, in truth, in most of those I was not changed. The situation was changed. God intervened. Divine intervention. But I was not changed. I was the same person. I was happier because he took away my pain, or I was, you know, blessed, but to truly be enriched, <clears throat> I was not enriched in the fullness of what, what he desires in that. So I want to go back and I want to read the initial scripture, and that initial scripture, the one that we read first and said, well, we're pretty familiar with that verse. I want to read it again, and then I want to comment uh, on that. 
For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. I want to emphasize that what it says, through his poverty you might be made rich. Not through his richness, not through his power, not through the glory of sitting on the throne, not through the, the, the one who was rich before he came down here. No, he, he was rich in glory. He was rich with the Father with all sorts of things. But he came down here and he became poor and he became humble and he became uh, crucified that through his poverty we might become rich. <clears throat> and I used to think that it was his richness, that it was his richness, his richness that, that, that made me rich. And that all the benefits and blessings is what has really, you know, enriched my life. And when I was younger and in the ministry, uh, in, in that manner, it was. I mean, it, it held me, but it didn't change me. It blessed me, but it didn't change me. And, you know, when reading this scripture and the more I've gotten to know the Lord, you know, I realize that it is his poverty that has truly enriched me. It's his poverty that has enriched me. Um, in his humility, in his brokenness, in his weakness, I have seen love. And my love has been enriched. My love has changed from uh, being... Uh, you know, uh, more self-centered. Uh, I put, I wrote down, my love has changed. It has been enriched. It has been moved from off of me, from off of self, from off of things. His poverty, his kind of love has changed and enriched my kind of love. And, uh, just a little list that I made. Uh, his poverty has enriched his poverty. Not, not him before the world with all power enriching me. Not him raised from the dead and using that and I from my throne. Will, but his lack and his poverty and his loss. And I put his poverty has enriched my heart has changed my heart. His poverty has uh, affected my approach to people and to problems. It has bled into me. And that's, that's probably a good way to say it. It's bled into me. It just out of his veins and just bled into my being uh, his kind of uh, approach compared to someone who thinks they know it all or has it all. My attitude. He has enriched my attitude with a um, with a view from the cross now instead of a view from victory on the throne. Because remember it says, his poverty has enriched me. My viewpoint obviously goes along with that. How you see things from, from the heart of Jesus as he hung on that cross. I mean you see that with the, you see that with the one of the thieves hanging there beside Jesus and one of them is putting Jesus down and the other one sees his poverty and sees he didn't have to be there. He didn't, you know, he didn't deserve this, but he's here. And he sees something of, he sees something in the poverty of Jesus as he hung there. And Jesus says, 
this day, you. Not, not him. The other one is yelling, use your power. Use not your poverty, but use your power to save us. And Jesus doesn't say, you will be with me. Because you know nothing of my poverty. You only want my my strength to save, to change your circumstances, to change not yourself, but the things around you. Change this person. Change how much I make on my job. This sort of thing. His poverty has enriched my tears. It's enriched my tears. They're different tears now. They are tears of, of uh, you know, you see Jesus in his poverty when he, he said, I would have, I would have gathered you. I would have brought you into me and under me and covered and loved, and, um, but you would not. Well, he, he wasn't talking about Jesus, the mighty Son of God, would have done this for you. He's talking about, I'm, I'm just a hen, a mother hen, and you're my chicks. That's a different heart. That's a poverty heart. Um, so, but, but Jesus wept over Jerusalem. And I think that many times we weep for ourselves. We weep for what we're going through. We weep for our lack. We weep for, you know, and we don't really taste the salt of his tears. Um, his poverty has enriched my song. My songs, I mean, I've written a hundred or more songs. And in the last bunch of years, they've just changed. they just, um, for me, they speak what I've seen of his heart instead of um, what he's done for me or, or how happy he's made my life or the things that he's uh, really gone the extra mile for me. Instead of asking me, could you, instead of me intervening, could you just go the extra mile for me? You know, could you, when they slapped you, instead of asking me to, to avenge you, could you just turn the other cheek? Could you be with me in this? Uh, he's enriched my touch. Um. I don't know. I want Jesus to touch people through me. I don't want to. I don't want to use a pastor's touch. I'm a pastor, but I don't want to use a pastor's touch. I don't want to touch people for my benefit. I want it. I want it to be His touch. I want it to be the one who, in His poverty, touched me. And then finally on this list, my desires are enriched. My desires are enriched. They're less selfish. Just less selfish. So I want to read you some scriptures um, straight from the Bible pertaining to the enrichment of his poverty because I read others that you know because the, the king will bless us you know God would but I just want to read these scriptures because they have a different turn 2nd Corinthians 16 as sorrowful talking about us as sorrowful yet always rejoicing as poor impoverished, not just physically or financially, we're talking about 
giving ourselves away to the to loss for others, as poor, yet making many rich. That's like Jesus. That in His poverty He's enriched us. So we are, we have His life and His nature, and we are as poor, impoverished instead of great and mighty ministers and well known as poor, making many rich as having nothing and yet possessing all things. James 1, 9 and 10 Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, not that he will be exalted, that he is exalted to be, to be with Jesus in the lower seat, with Jesus um, where his heart lies. Where his heart lies. And that's why Jesus said, if anyone ever slaps you, don't worry, I'll take the, I'll take the next one. Or if they try to slap you, they can slap me and I'll turn the other cheek. Or if they make you, want you to go one mile, don't worry, I will do a miracle and you'll get out of it. He wants us brought in to him. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. But the rich, this is what the rich should rejoice in, in that he is made low. In that he is made low. Let him rejoice in that. Because as the flower, the beautiful thing of the grass, he shall pass away. Tell you what's not going to pass away. Jesus is not going to pass away, but not just the eternal Son of God, the Lamb of God in His nature that God has exalted above everything. And then uh, just two final scriptures I want to join together out of the book of Revelation. I want to show you one side, one side, and the other side. One side about... Um, being rich in one way and the other one in being rich in another way. Revelation 2.9 I know thy works and tribulation and poverty but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. So you see these people, the ones that he's saying that is rich as ones going through tribulation, ones who are in poverty, not, again, financial poverty, and blasphemy and the synagogue of Satan. And all he can say to them is, I know, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. That's his heart. See, we just mourn and pine away over all of the lack that should be something we've drawn, we, we've joined with him, like on that cross. Not the thief that's trying to get out of it, but the thief that says, you know, you you're different. Your poverty is is special, and Jesus says, you're with me, and you'll be with me. All right, here's the contrasting verse in Revelation. This one just said, I know thy poverty, but thou art rich now. Revelation 3.17 Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind and naked. They consider the wrong things riches. They think getting out of everything, tribulation, out of poverty, out of, of bad situations, that's God enriching my life. And here you have an example where he is pointing out what his exact heart is. You are poor, poverty, but really you're rich. You say you're rich, but really you're
your pour. So, that's it. We should pray. Lord Jesus, you've been dealing with me on, on true beauty. You've been dealing with me on true riches. You've been dealing with me to come unto you where you're at instead of always seeking to get you to come to me where I'm at. Lord, it's not your riches that has made me rich or us rich. It's not your exaltation on the throne that these scriptures speak of that has come down and made us rich. It is you in your poverty that in your, in your love we see love. We see a poverty kind of love that, that is beautiful. And we find that to be a place of richness. It moves into us. It bleeds into us. And we begin to love as you love. To loss. To whatever loss. Not fighting loss, but loving. We find humility that is from the cross. We find all of those beautiful traits that is just nothing less than your poverty on the cross. And we want your spirit. We want your nature, that lamb nature, to fill us. To fill us full. Like David said. So that our cups run over. Oh, Lord, hear our prayer in our hearts. Let whatever was shared through this sharing right here Go beyond just talking about lack and suffering and move right into the beauty of why your scripture says that in your poverty, not in your resurrection or, or in your exaltedness before you came down, but in your poverty we are made rich. Help us by the Spirit to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. We ask in Jesus' name.